This podcast is brought to you by ICT4D.at and inspired by Farm Radio. Hello, listener. This is Podcast Farms, how to podcast. This is your host, Lydia, with my co host, Juliana. And Noah. It's all about kickstarting your podcast journey from beginning to the end. We'll all be taking turns diving deeper into different aspects of podcasting. Hello, listener. This is Podcast Farms, how to podcast. The show where we dive into all things podcasting. I'm your host for today, Lydia. And on today's episode, we're going to tackle topics like who can have a podcast? What do you need to create your own podcast? Where to record your pod? The pros and cons of having a guest or a co-host. Whether you're a seasoned content creator or just getting started, this episode is packed with valuable insights to guide you on your podcasting journey. So, who can have a podcast, you ask? Well, anyone. Anyone with an idea, passion, and the necessary resources can start a podcast. Podcasting has become increasingly accessible over the years, thanks to the internet and various hosting platforms. The first thing you'll need to do is choose your niche and theme for your podcast. Before you even hit the recording button, think about your passions, expertise, and what resonates with you and your desired listeners. Second thing you'll need is equipment and software. You don't need a fancy studio, but you do need reliable equipment. A good quality microphone, headphones, and recording software are essential. Let's change gears to planning and content structure. Plan your episodes in advance. Create a detailed outline for each episode. Make sure it includes key points, main topics, questions, and transitions between segments. For example, introduction to main content, to guest interview, to listener questions, and to conclusion. You'll also need to decide on episode length. This can vary depending on your content and target audience. Let me give you an example. Podcasts like You Made It Weird can range between an hour and two hours and a half, while podcasts like TED Talks Today usually last between 10 to 20 minutes. So based on the content you want to distribute, you can settle on a duration that works for you and your target audience. Another key factor of planning is choosing your format for your podcast. Solo podcasts, co-hosted, a panel discussion are a few of the many types of formats you can implement on your podcast. And let's not forget your intro and outro. Design a captivating introduction and outro for your podcast. I'll dive deeper into planning and content structure in a later episode. You'll also need a place to record your podcast. I would suggest finding a quiet space to minimize background noise. Speak naturally and confidently, and don't worry about perfection. One of the biggest decisions you need to make at the very beginning of your podcast is naming your podcast. You have to think about the relevance, memorability, uniqueness, clarity of the name you're thinking of. Now, let's discuss cover art and branding. Your podcast's cover art is your virtual calling card. Design a cover that reflects your podcast's personality while catching the listener's eye. Don't forget, consistent branding across your episodes and social media helps build recognition. When you're done with recording and editing, you'll have to start considering hosting platforms. These platforms distribute your episodes to various podcast directors like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. The next step is promote your podcast on social media, collaborate with other podcasters, and engage with your audience. Considering that naming your podcast is one of the major decisions you'll make, I've decided to go deeper and give you a few tips to help you on your way. Since choosing a podcast name is an important step that reflects your show's identity, here are some tips to help you come up with a memorable and effective podcast name. My first tip is to make sure the name you pick reflects your podcast's content. Your podcast name should give listeners an idea of what your show is about, so incorporate keywords or themes that represent your content. The name should also be clear and simple and easy to understand. Avoid using complex or obscure terms that might end up confusing your potential listener. 
My third tip is to make sure your podcast name is memorable. So aim for a name that's easy to remember and catchy. Having a unique podcasting name will help you stand out in the sea of other podcasts. You should also avoid following trends when you're trying to come up with a name. While trendy names might be appealing at first, they can quickly become outdated. So choose a name that will remain relevant for a long period of time. Also, before finalizing the name, make sure to check the availability. Research existing podcast names to ensure the chosen name isn't already in use. You want to avoid potential legal issues and confusion. You should also check if the domain name and social media handles associated with your podcast name are available. Another bit of advice I would give you is to incorporate keywords into your podcast name. Including relevant keywords can help you with searchability on podcast platforms. Also consider the length of a podcast name. A shorter name is often easier to remember and type, so aim for a name that's concise. My next tip is to consider the virtual appeal of a name. So consider how the name looks on texts, like logos and cover art. It should be visibly appealing and easy to read in different sizes. I would also suggest you create a name that creates an emotional connection between you and your listeners. Think about how the name makes listeners feel. Ask yourself, does it invoke curiosity, excitement, or a sense of connection? If you're unsure, I would suggest you test the names with others. Share potential podcast names with friends, family, or peers to gather feedback and see how it resonates with them. That doesn't mean you should make the podcast name too specific. You should choose a name that allows for the potential growth and expansion of your podcast content and themes. So remember, your podcast name will be the first impression your potential listeners have of your show. So take your time to brainstorm and choose a name that aligns with your podcast's vision and resonates with your target audience. Coming up, locations. You can record a podcast in different locations, depending on your preferences, equipment, and the desired ambiance. A home studio. In a car. A soundproofed co-working space. A professional podcast studio for rent. In a hotel room if you're traveling. A closet or a walk-in wardrobe. A library if they have an area that can be reserved for recording. And finally, the outdoors. As an advice, I would ask you to be cautious of the wind and other environmental noises when you're recording outdoors. Always do a test recording to ensure the sound quality meets your standards before proceeding with a full episode. Next up, I'll be covering artwork for your podcast. So, when we're thinking about creating an artwork for our podcast, we must keep in mind how important the virtual element is in representing your show and attracting potential listeners. Here are some tips to consider when you're designing a podcast cover art. The first tip is to make sure your artwork is clear and simple. Avoid clutter and adding too many details that might end up making the artwork confusing. Like your podcast name, your podcast artwork has to reflect the content it's putting out into the world. The artwork should virtually convey the theme or subject matter of your podcast. You also have to be consistent with your branding. Make sure the podcast's artwork is consistent with your overall branding. And choose a clear and readable font for the podcast title. Make sure it's legible even in smaller size. Your artwork should stand out in a sea of podcast thumbnails. Make it visually striking so it can catch the audience's attention. Aim for original artwork that sets your podcast apart from others. Make sure to get feedback from your friends, peers, or your target audience. And lastly, be sure to follow the specifications and guidelines set up by the hosting platform. This can be regarding cover art dimensions, resolutions, or content. So remember, your podcast cover art is one of the first impressions listeners have of your show. So it's worth investing time and effort to create artwork that accurately represents your content and draws in potential listeners. Coming up, I'll be covering co-hosting. Having a co-host for your podcast can bring both advantages and disadvantages. Here, I'll break down the pros and cons of having a co-host. First things first, the pros. Having a co-host on your podcast can create an engaging and dynamic conversation by providing a new perspective. A co-host will also help with the workload, which will include researching, recording, editing, promoting, and interviewing guests. They can also alleviate the pressure of constantly being the sole voice and source of content. And now, let's go to the cons 
One of the major difficulties of having a co-host is coordinating your schedule. Different people have different priorities in their life, so creating a schedule that works for both of you might be difficult. Another major con is decision making. Collaborating decision making can sometimes slow down the process of planning and executing podcast episodes. Co-hosts may have different ideas about the show's direction, tone, or content, which might lead to creative tension. Although co-hosts share the workload of a podcast, ensuring both co-hosts have equal roles and presence in the podcast can prove quite challenging. You might also have to put into consideration the audience's preference. Listeners may resonate more with one co-host than the other, which can impact audience engagement. So when you choose a co-host, it's important to choose someone who shares your podcast vision, values, and goals, and is willing to have open and free communication. In the final segment of this episode, we'll be discussing guests. Having a guest on your podcast can offer several benefits and some challenges. So let's start with the pros. New people bring new perspectives. Guests can bring fresh perspective and expertise, adding variety to your content. Having guests on your podcast can also help you with networking. Hosting guests allows you to connect with experts, influencers, and peers in your field, not to mention exposing you to new listeners. And if you choose to have experts and professionals on your podcast, that would further establish your credibility. Now, let's go to the cons. The first one off the bat is scheduling challenges. Coordinating schedules with guests can be challenging, especially if they have busy agendas. Another thing to consider is quality variability. The quality of a conversation with a guest can vary from person to person. Some people have experience and some people are new to the podcasting game. That's not to say first-time guests won't be good. It's just something to consider when you're thinking of a new guest for your podcast. You should also make sure before inviting a guest to your podcast if your contents align. This means ensuring your guest's content aligns with your podcast's theme and values. This is very essential to maintain consistency. Ultimately, the decision to have guests on your podcast depends on your goals, content style, and target audience. If done well, guest appearances can enhance your podcast's value and broaden its appeal. Starting a podcast is an exciting journey that requires dedication, creativity, and the willingness to learn. Remember, it's okay to start small and evolve over time. Thanks for tuning in to Podcast Firms How to Podcast. Before we wrap up today's episode, I wanted to remind you about some valuable resources and ways to stay engaged. First off, if you found today's conversation inspiring and want to dig deeper, be sure to check out our detailed show notes. And if you're eager to explore the articles, books, websites we discussed, don't worry, we've got you covered. Head over to ict4d.at under podcast form to access a curated list of all the resources we mentioned today. And lastly, if you know someone who would benefit from the knowledge shared on this episode, don't hesitate to share with them. Your recommendation can make a positive impact on their learning journey. Before I go, here's a sneak peek from our next episode where my co-host Noah discusses hardware and software you'll need for your podcast. Let me tell you a story. Back in the day, we rocked those audio cassette players. You could groove to tunes and even lay down your own vocal masterpiece. Certain cassettes held enchanting stories and insightful discoveries that etched themselves into my memory. Well, everyone, that's a wrap for today. Remember, the learning doesn't stop here. Dive into those show notes, explore the resources, and join us on our next episode.